In the bluffs outside of Denver, Colorado, paleontologist Tyler Leeson is searching for evidence of a pivotal moment in our evolution, the rise of mammals after the demise of the dinosaurs. The period right after the extinction of the dinosaurs, 66 million years ago, is one of the least understood moments in time in all of Earth's history. At Corral Bluffs, we find rocks of the right age. So we are looking for things like mammals, turtles, crocodiles, birds, and plants, and trying to combine all that into the reconstruction of the environment. Tyler, an experienced dinosaur hunter, was ready to apply his fossil finding techniques to the site. The old search image is sort of classic paleontology where you'd go out, walk the bottom of a, of a gully or the base of a cliff, and you'd find broken bits of bone. Then you head uphill, looking for bigger bones weathering out of the dirt. But at Corral Bluffs, the search for early mammals was coming up empty. I immediately started just searching for bone and not finding anything. So I was pretty frustrated. What could I do to, to find fossils here? The fossils were there. Tyler was just looking for them in the wrong way. Until he came across an old specimen in the museum's vault. It was a mammal skull embedded in a round rock. And that's when sort of the light bulb went off where I'm like, ah, oh, well, maybe concretions. Concretions are kind of like nodules, like an egg or a ball that you find in a rock. James Hagedorn is curator of geology at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. He's a colleague of Tyler's and has lots of experience with concretions. So if you have a skull or a tooth or even a bit of poop and it falls to the seafloor or it ends up on the bottom of a lake um, and gets buried, it is compositionally different than the rest of the sand around it or the mud or whatever. With typical fossils, the organic matter would slowly be replaced by minerals, leaving petrified bones within the surrounding sediments. But with concretions, the minerals encase the organic matter as well, creating a distinctive rock within a rock with a fossil inside. That kaleidoscope of minerals get attracted to that tooth or skull or tree root or something, and they start to grow around it layer by layer in the sediment, kind of like a pearl in an oyster. The mineral casing can preserve otherwise fragile fossils just like those of the early mammals Tyler is looking for. The concretions form around these bones and it creates this hard protective shell. And then these fossils in their nice protective casings roll down the hill. And then we crack them open and sure enough, we started finding bone inside. I just found a mammal skull! <laughs> and that was a complete game changer for this entire project. Tyler and the team split open concretion after concretion, revealing hundreds of fossils, including dozens of mammals from the period right after the dinosaurs went extinct. People have been looking for fossils in Corral Bluffs for over 100 years, and they just didn't look for concretions, but they were looking for actual leaves or they were looking for bones. It was an honest mistake. The concretions here are formed by a mineral called apatite, which is not usually associated with terrestrial sites like the Denver Basin. Apatite is the same mineral that my teeth and bones are made out of and so are yours. In marine settings, in ancient oceanic deposits, they're pretty common. Prior to working on this project, I had never seen an apatite concretion in a terrestrial setting. 
It's super rare. Yet here, in plain sight, apatite concretions have been hiding priceless specimens from one of the most important periods in mammal evolution. Tyler has a paleontological gold mine right there. I mean, there's just nothing like it. Wouldn't it be cool if you could find more of them? Because nature repeats itself. Whatever processes led to the formation of those fossils and the preservation of them ought to repeat itself elsewhere in the world.